What's going on, Dodgers Nation? DMAC here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Should the Dodgers trade for Corbin Burns? When will the Brewers look to deal the Cy Young Award winner? We're going to dive into all that in just a second. But quick reminder for our latest Dodgers news and rumors all season long. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comments section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Do you want to see the Dodgers try to trade for Corbin Burns? Would you be willing to part ways with some of the Dodgers' top prospects? I want all your takes on Corbin Burns down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So you know what they say. You never want to burn bridges, right? Well, it looks like the Milwaukee Brewers have burned a bridge with their A's Cy Young Award winning starting pitcher Corbin Burns. The Brew crew beat their ace in an arbitration hearing and will pay him $10.01 million this season instead of the $10.75 million in which he filed. So we're talking about a difference of $740,000. That's only $20,000 more than the league minimum. And yes, this is Milwaukee and they run their franchise like they're Mill Brokey. But still, just because you're 19th in spending, just because you have one of the worst TV deals in the sport. Just because you rely mainly on gate revenue and concessions for your profit, that doesn't mean you need to alienate your relationship with your best player, with the guy that won the NL Cy Young Award in 2021 and is finishing the top 10 for the last three seasons. He's been an absolute horse in Milwaukee, finishing in the top two in both strikeouts and strikeout rate in each of those seasons as well. If you look at his numbers last season, they definitely took a little step back from his Cy Young season in 2021, but he was still among the best pitchers in the game. His 2.94 ERA was 18th. His 3.05 expected ERA was 10th. His 3.14 FIP was 15th. His 2.91 Sierra was 6th. His 30.5% K percentage was 4th. So it doesn't make very much sense to me. We're talking about a 7% increase. I mean, look, Bernie the Brewers, only fans can pretty much pay for that. No, I'm just playing Bernie the Brewer. You stay safe going down the slide this year. I don't want to see a David Vasse like injury for you. But I have to say, as the conductor of the Dodgers, please trade for Corbin Burns train. The fact that there is a riff brewing between Corbin Burns and Milwaukee, that's music to my ears because an unhappy Corbin Burns is a guy that most likely is going to be traded at some point. And look, the best time to trade a player like Corbin Burns really is with a year and a half left. And at the beginning of the season, we know the Brewers, they're a team that could contend for the division. So it does make a lot of sense to keep him to start the year, see how the team does. And then if they're not contending by the deadline, then you flip him. Then you cash in because the Brewers, they can't afford to let Burns walk without getting anything in return. And we know the Los Angeles Dodgers, whose farm system was ranked number one by Keith Law. They have all the prospects that you need to pull off a deal for Corbin Burns. And we're going to discuss that in a second but first here was Corbin Burns at Brewers Spring Training talking about his disappointment with the organization you, you kind of find out your true value um, you think you, you you work hard for seven years in the organization and five years with the with the big league team and um, you get in there and basically they, they value you much different than what you thought you'd you contributed to the organization um, and it's just you know it's obviously it's tough to hear it's tough to take but you know they're trying to do what they can to win a hearing um, but I think there was obviously other ways that they, they could have gone about it um, and um, probably been a little more respectful with the, with the way they went about it. But, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, here we are. Um, you know, they, they obviously, they won it. Um, but it, it, when it came down to, to winning or losing the hearing, it was, it was more than that for me. So clearly he's noticeably upset and he feels that the organization didn't go about it the right way. And yes, if you're the Brewers, you see what they're trying to do. From their point of view, they're saying, we don't want to set a precedent. You look at what Dontrell Willis got back in 2006 when he set a record with that $4.35 million arbitration deal and how that led to pitchers getting more money for the following seasons. Well, the Brewers are saying to themselves, if we acquiesce to his demands, then we're going to be paying more money to some of these players and we're already one of the cheaper organizations or should I say cost conscious organizations in baseball so they don't want to continue that but still players talk agents talk from an optic standpoint this is terrible for your organization but Burns would go on and he would talk about the relationship right now and where it stands with him and the organization 
Yeah, I mean, there's there, there's no denying that the relationship is definitely definitely hurt from um, you know what what perspired over the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, there's there, there's really no way of getting around that. Um, obviously, we're, we're we're professionals and we're going to go out there and, and do our job and I mean, keep giving what I can every five, every fifth day that I go out there. But um, you know, when some of the things that are said that. Um, you know, for instance, basically, basically put me in the forefront of, of the reason why we didn't make the postseason last year. That, I mean, that's something that probably doesn't need to be said. You know, we can go go about a hearing without having to do that. Um, so that's kind of one of those things that, you know, obviously, you know, they, there was no attacking of, of character, of, you know, person of who I was, but um, just the just the some of the stuff that was said that you know definitely didn't need to be um, said is, is is something that you know I think kind of disappointed everyone. So I haven't seen this much drama between an organization and a team from Wisconsin since Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. But I don't think that this one is fixable. I think the fact that they're not going to be able to re-sign Corbin Burns, a guy that is going to be able to sign a deal worth upwards of $200 plus million plus potentially. We know the Brewers, they don't sign guys like that. We also know that once they have to start paying guys through arbitration, they usually look to trade him. Just look at Josh Hader last year. They were in first place when they made the deal for Hader to the Padres they ended up finishing the season seven games out so all signs point to the Brewers ultimately dealing Corbin Burns the only question is will it happen before opening day or will it happen at the deadline because the Brewers can't head into next offseason with Corbin Burns knowing he's going to walk and that is why my theory in all this is that Corbin Burns he's a guy he's from Bakersfield California he understands how the market works he knows the Brewers aren't going to sign him to an extension so he's using this as a way to accelerate trade talks to get him to a team that might consider signing him to an extension to a market that does have more funds to try to retain a player of his caliber and I think if you're the Brewers there's no way you can let him walk the only question is do you trade him before opening day do you do it at the deadline or do you wait till next offseason I think if you're the Brewers it makes the most sense to wait to the deadline like we talked about earlier now if the Brewers do make him available in trade talks will the Dodgers go after him well the first big question is do the Dodgers need another ace level starting pitcher well just look at last offseason just look at last deadline what did they do they were interested in trading for Luis Castillo they were interested in trading for Frankie Montas they dodged that bullet this offseason they were linked to Jacob deGrom they were linked to Carlos Rodon they clearly think they could use another ace level pitcher and when you look at this Dodgers rotation they are loaded with depth you have Julio Urias, who has established himself as one of the top 10 to 15 pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. He's a guy that is going to be testing the waters at season's end. He will enter free agency. And yes, Julio is one of the best pitchers in the league. But in 2021, he ran out of gas. In 2020, he was lights out out of the Dodgers pen. So throughout his career, he hasn't put the Dodgers on his back as a starting pitcher. Now, can he do that? I absolutely think he's capable of it. But still, we're going to have to see it. And then there's Clayton Kershaw. We know Kersh is still one of the best pitchers in the league and he's very effective when he's healthy but you can't expect him to pitch over 130 innings. He hasn't pitched more than 130 innings since 2019. He's a guy that didn't pitch in the postseason in 2021. This year he's feeling good and he's feeling healthy but there's only a finite number of pitches that you can expect from Clayton Kershaw. To me my expectation level is just to enjoy every part of his career. It's almost like a Tiger Woods. You don't expect him to win another major but everything you get from him you feel good about at this stage and then there's Noah Syndergaard and so far so good at Dodger spring training Dave Roberts said the other day that his velocity was up but still he has to prove that he can return to form and then you have Dustin May then you have Tony Gonsolin two of the Dodgers younger starting pitchers that still haven't put it together for an entire season yes Tony Gonsolin made the all-star team last year but he faded down the stretch that split finger change that he has is a pitch that really takes its toll on your arm. We'll see if he can stay healthy for the entire season. He has an ERA north of nine for the postseason. And then there's Dustin May, who had some command issues late last year. He didn't even pitch in the NLDS. And then you have some of the young guns. You got Gavin Stone. You got Bobby Miller. You've got Ryan Pepio. I mean, will those guys emerge? That still remains to be seen. So there are some question marks with this Dodgers starting rotation. 
And if you bring in a Corbin Burns, an ace-level pitcher that the Dodgers have been looking at over the past two seasons, that really changes the complexion and really makes this rotation the best one in baseball, in my opinion. When you consider the top-end talent it would have and all the young depth that's continuing to develop. And also, you protect yourself if one of those guys goes down. And that has been the theme over the past few seasons. Look who the opening day starter was in 2022. Walker Bueller, he goes down. He undergoes Tommy John surgery. There is some hope that he could return for this season, but that's most likely going to be in a reliever role as a multi-inning short burst type of reliever that can help the Dodgers from that aspect. It's not going to be the lights out starting pitch that we saw in 2018, 2019, or 2020. That is not going to happen this season, most likely. Now, who would the Dodgers have to give up to acquire Corbin Burns? Well, they're going to be looking for top prospects. You most likely would have to part ways with a Bobby Miller, or maybe you include a Michael Bush, a guy that doesn't have a clear-cut role on this team. Or maybe you can include some big league-ready talent and a combination of that and some other prospects. Maybe you do consider parting ways with a Tony Gonsolin and try to sell him on a high note. Because, look, they're going to have to give up a guy to plug in Burns into this rotation anyway. So maybe that's the name you look to deal. But the other issue here is, what if you trade for Corbin Burns and Shohei Otani becomes available? Well, you want to keep your Otani chips available at all times. You know the Dodgers don't want to just give up all their top guys if they could possibly use them to flip them for Shohei because we know that, one, he could help them this year and also getting him in a Dodgers uniform and starting that process to get an extension done, that would be big long term. So, look, I do think the Dodgers will be looking to deal and upgrade this roster because we know at this point they are not going to be looking to shed salary. They're not interested in getting under that CBT. They are adding money. I don't think a lot of Dodger fans out there truly realize how much of a last dance type of year this is for the Dodgers. This could be Julio Urias's last year. This could be Clayton Kershaw's last year. Freddie Freeman isn't getting any younger. He's 33 years old. Mookie Betts is at the peak of his prime. You need to take advantage of this core and try to maximize this window, and you do that by adding a Corbin Burns. I absolutely think the Dodgers should go after Corbin Burns if he becomes available. I definitely think he could be the missing piece for this Dodgers rotation and just take them over the top and give them a horse that can take them through the postseason. He has the kind of stuff that plays up in the postseason because we know there's been a lot of regular season success through some of these starters, but that doesn't always translate in the postseason. So I do think that Dodgers fans are going to realize that LA is all in on this season. I do think they would be willing to take some money out of that 401k and part ways with some of these prospects and even some of this big league talent to try to get a guy like a Corbin Burns if they truly believe he can take them over the top. And I absolutely believe that Corbin Burns makes this the best rotation in baseball and gives the Dodgers a great shot of winning the World Series. Because look, I always say parades over prospects. Look, the reality is 70% of prospects don't work out. 70% of prospects don't contribute to the big league team. And the reality is that most of these guys in the youth movement, some of them aren't going to work out. So the Dodgers could take advantage of their high ranking right now and really go for it with this group. But let me know down below in the comment section. Do you want to see the Dodgers trade for Corbin Burns? I absolutely think they should go for it if he becomes available. I also think that he won't be available until closer to the deadline. I think the Brewers will start the year, see how they fare, try to mend the fences with Burns. But still, he is not going to be there long term. They just simply can't afford him. But I want all your Corbin Burns takes down below. The kid from Bakersfield, you want to see him back in California pitching for the L.A. Dodgers. Let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all latest Dodgers news and rumors all season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.